Chapters 7 through 12 of the First Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The First Book of Samuel, Chapters 7 through 12. Chapter 7 the people of Krith jerim consequently came and took the ark of the ever-living and brought it to the house of abinadab on the hill and he devoted his son eleazar to take care of the ark of the ever-living the ark of the ever-living however remained in Krith jerim for a long period twenty years altogether and the whole house of israel mourned after the ever-living then samuel spoke to all the house of israel saying if you turn to the ever-living with your whole heart fling out the foreign gods from among you and fling your heart to the ever-living and serve him alone and he will redeem you from the hands of the philistim the children of israel consequently expelled the baalim and the ashtaroths and served the ever-living alone then samuel said collect the representatives of israel to mitzvah and pray for yourselves to the ever-living they therefore assembled at mitzvah and drew water and poured it out before the ever-living and fasted on the same day and said we have sinned against the ever-living after that samuel judged the israelites in mitzvah but the philistim heard that the israelites had assembled in mitzvah so the lords of the philistim went up to the children of israel and when the israelites perceived it they were in terror before the philistim the children of israel consequently said to samuel work for us with a cry to the ever-living our god that he may save us from the hand of the philistim samuel therefore took a fat young lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the ever-living samuel also cried to the ever-living on account of israel and the ever-living answered for while samuel was offering the burnt offering and while the philistim advanced to battle with israel the ever-living thundered with a loud roar on that day over the philistim and defeated them and routed them before israel then the leaders of israel advanced from mitzvah in pursuit of the philistim and defeated them at mithakaf and at bethkar therefore israel took a stone pillar and fixed it between mitzvah and hashen and named it aben azer saying so far the ever-living has relieved us thus the philistim were beaten and did not repeat their advance to the borders of israel for the hand of the ever-living was against the philistim during the period of samuel and he recovered to israel the towns that the philistim had taken from israel except akron and gath he also delivered the borders of israel from the power of the philistim and made peace between israel and the amorites samuel consequently judged in israel during the whole time of his life and he travelled continually year by year in circuit through bethel and gilgal and mitzvah and administered justice in all those districts then returned to ramath for his home was there and there he administered justice to israel and there he built an altar to the ever-living chapter eight but when samuel grew old he appointed his sons as judges in israel and the name of his eldest son was joal and the name of the second abiah they were judges in Barsheba. his sons however did not follow his ways but extorted taxes and took bribes and perverted justice consequently all the judges of israel assembled and came to ramath and said to him you are old now and your sons do not walk in your ways therefore appoint a leader to organize us like all the nations but the proposal was displeasing in the eyes of samuel because they said give us a leader to organize us so samuel prayed to the ever-living and the ever-living replied to samuel listen to the voice of the people as to all they ask from you for they have not rejected you but have rejected me their leader it is like all the doings they have done from the day i brought them up from mitzrayim to this day for they rejected me and served other gods so they do also to you listen therefore now to their voice you shall also confer solemnly with them and explain to them the constitution for the leader who is to govern over them samuel consequently reported all the commands of the ever-living to the people who demanded a leader from him and said this will be the constitution by which he will rule over you he will take your sons for his chariots and horsemen and to run before his carriage 
he will appoint colonels of regiments for himself and captains of companies also as mechanics in his workshops as reapers of his harvest and to make weapons for his soldiers and appliances for his chariots he will also take your daughters for confectioners and cooks and bakers and he will take the best of your farms and vineyards and olive yards and give them to his ministers and he will tithe your corn and wine and give it to his officers and ministers and your men-servants and maids and your best cattle and asses he will take and use them for his messengers he will take your sheep and make you his servants and then you will shriek at the sight of your leader whom you have chosen for yourselves but the ever-living will not answer you at that day the people however refused to listen to the voice of samuel and replied no he will only be a leader over us and we shall then be like the other nations and our leader can organize us and can lead us out and fight our battles so samuel listened to all the utterances of the people and reported them in the ears of the ever-living and the ever-living replied listen to their voice and select a leader for them samuel however said to the judges of israel go each to his own village chapter nine now there was a man of the tribe of benjamin named kish ben abial ben zeror ben bikorath ben afrak ben ari a benjaminite of great power who had a son named saul big and handsome and there was not a man in the nation of israel handsomer than he was taller than any man by the shoulders and upwards and kish saul's father had lost some asses so kish said to saul his son take with you one of the servants and arise go and seek those asses he therefore went over mount ephraim and searched in the country of shilsha and did not find them then he examined the district of shalim and they were not there so he passed to the district of jamen and found them not thence they went to the country of suf when saul said to his attendant where will this journey take us to let us return or my father will leave grieving for the asses and fret about us but he replied to him there is a man of god in this town and a man to be respected all he says happens let us go to him now perhaps he may tell us the way we should follow saul however answered to his lad well if we should go how could we make the man to instruct for our stock of bread is exhausted so we have no present to bring to the man of god what have we the youth continued in answer to saul look i have found in my pocket a quarter shekel of silver we will give that to the man of god and he will inform us about our journey formerly in israel a man said when going to inquire of god let us go to the seer for the instructor of today was formerly called a seer then saul replied to the youth you have spoken well let us go they went accordingly to the top of the town and met girls coming out to draw water and asked them is there a seer in this place and they answered them and said he is now before you on the hill for he has today come to the town for he sacrifices for the people on the height so if you go into the village you will meet him before he goes to the height to eat the people will not eat before he comes for he will bless the sacrifice after that they will eat the festival so now go for this is the day to meet him they therefore went up the village until they came to the center of the town and then samuel came to meet them at the ascent of the height for the ever-living had opened the understanding of samuel that very day before the coming of saul saying at this time to-morrow i shall send to you from the district of benjamin the man whom you must consecrate as the leader of my people israel he will deliver my people from the power of the philistim and he shall shepherd my people for its cries have come to me when samuel saw saul the ever-living said to him that is the man of whom i spoke to you he will organize my people then saul approached samuel in the midst of the square and said can you inform me the way to the house of the seer and samuel answered saul and said i am the seer go before me to the height and dine with me to-day and i will send you off in the morning i will inform you about all that is upon your mind and as for your lost asses which you have hunted for three days rest your mind about them for they have been found but now upon whom is the thought of all israel is it not on you and on all your father's house 
Saul, however, answered and said, uh, Am I not a Benjaminite, of the smallest tribe in Israel, and of a clan less distinguished than any of the clans of the tribes of Benjamin? So why do you speak to me of such an honor? Samuel then took Saul and his attendant, and brought them to the dining-room, and put them at the head of the guests, of whom there were about thirty. Then Samuel said to the attendant, Serve up the dish which I entrusted to you, the one I told you to reserve by you. So the attendant took the leg and lifted up and placed it before Saul. Then he said, This is the portion that was to be placed before you. Eat, for it has been specially reserved for you, and I told the people I had invited. So Saul dined with Samuel that day, and when they descended from the height of the village, he talked with Saul on the veranda. Then they returned to sleep. But when the darkness had gone, Samuel invited Saul to go up to the top of the veranda, saying, Rise up, and I will take leave of you. So Saul arose, and both went out, he and Samuel, into the street. When they had descended to the outskirts of the village, Samuel said to Saul, Order the lad to go on before us. So he went forward. But you stand a while, and listen to the command of God. Chapter 10 Then Samuel took a flask of oil, and poured it on his head, and kissed him, and said, is it not you whom the ever-living has consecrated over his inheritance to lead it when you go to-day from accompanying me two men will meet you at the tomb of rachel on the borders of benjamin at zeltzach and will say to you the asses which you went to seek are found and your father has now left off the matter of the asses and troubles about you and says what shall i do for my son and when you have gone from there a little way and come to alor tabor Three men coming up to God at Bethel will meet you, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three baskets of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine, who will wish you health and give you two cakes, which you must accept from them. After that you must go to the hill of God, where there is a garrison of the Philistim, and when you come near the village you will encounter a band of reciters descending from the height and in front of them a piper a drummer and a flute and harper and they will be reciting then the spirit of the ever-living will seize you and you will recite with them and dance in unison and when these sights come to you go and use what you have found for yourself for god is with you afterwards proceed me to gilgal and then i will come down to you to offer a burnt offering and sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving wait for seven days until i come and inform you what you are to do when he had turned his back from walking with samuel god entirely changed his heart when all these proofs came to him on that day for when he came to the hill a band of reciters met him and the divine spirit seized upon him and he recited with them when all who had known him formerly saw them and how he was reciting with the reciters all the people who were his neighbors exclaimed what has come to the son of kish is saul also among the reciters but a man from them answered and said and who is their father consequently it became a proverb is saul also among the prophets when he ceased reciting he went to the height when saul's uncle asked him and his attendant where have you been and he replied to seek the asses when i found them not i went to samuel then the uncle of Saul asked, Tell me, what did Samuel say to you? And Saul replied to his uncle, He informed us that the asses were found. But he did not tell him a word about the leadership of which Samuel had spoken. Samuel afterwards convoked the people to the ever-living at Mitzvah, and said to the children of Israel, Thus says the ever-living God of Israel, I brought Israel up from Mitzrayim, and delivered them from the hand of the Mitzrites, and from the hand of all the kingdoms that assailed them. But you now reject the God who recovered you from all your sufferings and distresses, and ask for a leader to place over you. So now present your tribes and regiments before the ever-living. Then Samuel advanced all the tribes of Israel, and the tribe of Benjamin was selected. Then he advanced the tribe of Benjamin by clans, and the clan of Matri was selected. Then Saul the son of Kish was selected, so they sought him, but could not find him. Consequently he inquired again of the ever-living whether that man had come, and the ever-living answered, He is here, but has hidden himself among the baggage. 
so they ran and took him from there and placed him in the center of the people and he was taller than any one from the shoulders and upwards then samuel said to the people you see whom the ever-living has chosen for himself that there is not his equal in all the nation and all the people cheered and exclaimed long live the leader samuel then related to the people the constitution of the leadership which he had written in a book and then confirmed it before the ever-living and then he dismissed all the assembly to their homes and saul also went to his home in gibeah and a force whose hearts god had touched went with him but some sons of belial said how can this fellow save us and abused him and brought him no presents but he kept silent chapter eleven when nakash the ammonite came up and besieged jabesh gilad all the chiefs of jabesh said to nakash the ammonite make a treaty with us and we will serve you but nakash the ammonite replied this is what i will do to you i will put out all your right eyes and make it a reproach to all israel <laughs> then the magistrates of jabesh said to him grant us seven days that we may send messengers to all the borders of israel then if there is no deliverance for us we will come out to you the messengers consequently went to gibeah to saul and reported the matter in the hearing of the people when all the people lifted up their voice and wept but just then saul came in after his oxen from the farm and saul asked what is the matter with the people that they are weeping so they repeated the words of the chiefs of jabesh then the spirit of god seized saul upon hearing it and he was very furious and took the pair of oxen and cut them up and sent to all the districts of israel by the hands of the messengers to say whoever will not come after saul and join samuel this shall be done to his oxen the terror of the ever-living consequently fell upon all the people and they came like one man then he organized them in bazek and there were three hundred thousand men of the children of israel and the men of judah thirty thousand and they said to the messengers who had come say thus to the people of jabesh gilad to-morrow we will be with you to rescue you before the noon the messengers accordingly went and informed the chiefs of jabesh and they were glad so the chiefs of jabesh said to-morrow we will come out to you and you can do to us what seems good in your eyes in the morning however saul divided his forces into three divisions and advanced to the center of the camp in the morning watch and assailed the ammonites until noon of the day and they were broken to pieces and fled and no two of them held together then the force asked of samuel who said saul should not be leader over us give those men to us that we may kill them saul however replied not a man shall be killed to-day for to-day the ever-living has made a great deliverance for israel and samuel said to the force march and let us go to gilgal and renew the leadership there all the force accordingly marched to gilgal and they elected saul leader there before the ever-living in gilgal and sacrificed sacrifices of thanksgiving before the ever-living and saul and all the men of israel rejoiced very greatly chapter twelve samuel afterwards said to all israel you see i have listened to your voice in all you have asked me and have appointed a leader over you so now your leader can march before you but i will govern in civil affairs as for my sons look they are among you and for myself i have walked before you from my youth until this day here i am answer me before the ever-living and before his anointed whose ox have i taken or whose ass have i taken to be as a cover and blind to my eyes from any man if i have i will return it to you and they replied you have neither defrauded us nor oppressed us and you have never extorted anything whatever from the hand of any one then he said to them the ever-living is a witness and his anointed is a witness with you this day that i have not taken anything whatever from my own hand and they answered he is witness so samuel responded to the people it was the ever-living who appointed moses and aaron and who brought your fathers from the land of mitzraim 
Therefore now station yourselves, and I will relate to you before the ever-living all the beneficences of the ever-living which he has done for you and for your fathers, from the time when Jacob came to the Mitzrayim until when your ancestors cried to the ever-living, and the ever-living sent Moses and Aaron and brought your fathers from the Mitzrayim and fixed them in this place. Yet they forgot their ever-living God, so he sold them to the hand of Sisera, the general of the army of Katzor, and to the hands of the Philistim, and to the hand of the king of Moab, who fought with them. Then they cried to the ever-living and said, We have sinned, for we have forsaken the ever-living and served the Baalim and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us from the power of our enemies, and we will serve you. So the ever-living sent Jerubal and the Danite, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you from the power of your enemies all around, and restored you to security. You have yourselves seen how Nakash, king of the Ammonites, came upon you when you said to me, We have no leader over us, though the ever-living God was your leader. So now see the leader you have chosen, for whom you asked. The ever-living has now placed a leader over you. If you reverence the ever-living and serve him, and listen to his voice, and do not rebel against the utterance of the ever-living, then you and your leader who directs you will be in union with your ever-living God. But if you do not listen to the voice of the ever-living, but rebel against the direction of the ever-living, then the hand of the ever-living will be against you as it was against your fathers. Stand, therefore, now, and see the great event which the ever-living will effect in your sight. Is it not wheat harvest at present? I will call to the ever-living, and he will send out the thunder and rain, that you may recognize and see how great a sin you committed in the sight of the ever-living, when you asked for a leader. Then Samuel called to the ever-living, and the ever-living sent thunder with rain at once, and all the people saw the greatness of the ever-living end of Samuel. Consequently all the assembly said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to your ever-living God, that we may not be killed, although we have added to all our offenses the sin of demanding a leader for ourselves. But Samuel replied to the people, Fear not, although you have done this wrong. Only do not turn away from the ever-living, but serve the ever-living with all your heart, and turn not after phantasms which cannot benefit or protect, for they are phantasms. The ever-living, however, will never forsake his people because of his great name, for the ever-living undertook to make you his people. As for myself, it would be a shame for me, a sin against the ever-living, if I ceased to pray for you and direct you in the way of honor and straightforwardness. So remember the ever-living, and serve him in truth with all your heart, for you see it is this which will make you great. But if you sin, then both you and your leader will decay." The end of chapters 7 through 12 of the first book of Samuel. Recording by Mark Penfold.